Hello everybody, it is time for yet another vlog, and this time we're taking a look at San Andreas, the latest disaster movie to hit the big screen, shockingly not made by Roland Emmerich. This one was directed by Brad Payton and stars Dwayne The Rock Johnson. The plot for this movie is pretty straightforward. Basically what's happening is the entire San Andreas fault is going off, like all of it, from Los Angeles to San Francisco and all points in between. And The Rock plays a guy named Ray, who is a rescue chopper pilot, desperately trying to keep his family safe while chaos ensues all around him. And yeah, that's about it. There's really nothing more to say. It's a disaster movie. The plot is just there to carry them from one special effects sequence to the next. And that's it. And for a disaster movie, it is at least serviceable. It's better than the usual crap that Roland Emmerich puts out, like the day after tomorrow or 2012. But this movie has been unusually popular. I don't know for any of you who have seen it, I don't know what it was like at your theater, but when I went to see it, I showed up about half an hour before the screening I wanted to attend, and it was already sold out. I had to buy a ticket for the one 45 minutes afterward, and then I had to go stand in a line that was already forming well over an hour before it was supposed to start, and... You know, I would expect this kind of thing for, say, The Avengers, but for a simple disaster movie, this just blows my mind. And apparently this was not isolated to just the theater I went to because this movie has been doing far better than anyone predicted. It made about $60 million over the weekend, or close to it, and most people were expecting 40, so that is a pretty big jump. I mean, it's not making Avengers numbers or anything, but still, that is respectable. And when you combine that with the international box office, it's already made enough to cover its production budget. I don't know how much they spent on marketing, but unless there's a huge drop in the second weekend, it's probably going to, at the very least, break even. And that really surprises me, because I didn't think so many people would be lining up to see just another disaster movie. Because let's face it, if you've seen one, you've seen them all. They all follow the exact same formula. You know exactly what to expect if you've seen anything from Roland Emmerich, or even if you've seen the Asylum knockoffs, you've already seen this movie, most likely. Was it just because The Rock was in this? I, I mean, I can understand why he'd be a box office draw. He is a pretty good actor, but I don't know. It's just weird. But nevertheless, it's doing pretty well. For what it's worth, I didn't hate the movie. I thought it was okay. It was paced pretty well. It has a runtime of a little less than two hours, so it never really goes on long enough to overstay its welcome. It's actually a pretty well-made movie overall. The acting was perfectly fine. No one's gonna win any awards for this, but it was okay. The special effects looked pretty good for the most part, with a few exceptions here and there. The sequence at the beginning of the movie, before everything goes to hell, it starts with this teenage girl in her car, who is not paying any attention to anything that's happening on the road. She keeps reaching around for her drink, looking at her cell phone, texting her friend. And then all of a sudden she gets hit by a rock slide out of nowhere, which is weird because it seemed like this is trying to show the dangers of distracted driving. But even if she wasn't distracted, I don't think there's really anything she could have done to avoid this. It, I mean, that fucking rock slide just boom out of nowhere. And as her car is rolling down the hill, oh my God. God, that looks so fake. I, I don't want to say it was asylum level bad, but it, it was pretty bad. And considering what the car went through before it finally came to a stop long enough for the rock to fly in and rescue her, she should have died at least three times over. And yet, she's perfectly fine. She's got a few scratches on her, which of course aren't bleeding because PG-13, but she's okay. Huh? Now, this movie does have one major casting snafu, and that is Alexandra Daddario, who plays the daughter of Ray and his wife, Emma, who's played by Carla Gugino. Now, th there's nothing wrong with her performance. Her performance was just fine. But she's supposed to be the daughter of Carla Gugino and The Rock. Alexandra Daddario, if you don't recall, she is Annabeth from the Percy Jackson movies. Even calling her the daughter of Carlo Gugino is a bit of a stretch. Calling her the daughter of The Rock? 
I'm pretty sure mommy was having an affair with the pool boy, because there is no way she got those bright blue eyes from a guy who's half black and half Samoan. That, that's just not going to happen. And of course, this movie still suffers from all the same old tropes that you'll see in every disaster movie, because like I said, if you've seen one, you've seen them all. Of course, mom and dad are divorced, and of course, mom and the daughter are living with mom's new boyfriend, who is of course filthy freaking rich and also kind of a douche. And the movie tries to trick you because it makes him look like a really nice guy at first, but about halfway through, suddenly the douche springs forth. You fooled me! And of course, the daughter meets a guy during this and they become romantically involved while the world is going to hell in a handbasket around them. Because that's the perfect time for a romance to blossom. The moment in the movie where they share their first kiss, it's one of those moments where they have about 90 seconds of downtime before the next big disaster hits. Because that's about all the time they have to rest between shit going wrong. And... As soon as they locked lips, I didn't even have to say it. The guy in the row behind me, I just heard him whisper, Really? <laughs> Thank you. But despite the movie's flaws, I didn't really have any major problems with it. My only real problem is... I've seen this kind of movie many times before. It's really nothing new. But, as far as disaster movies go, it's at least competently made. I'll give it that. As for whether I would recommend it, well, that's... Pretty easy, actually. You've seen the trailer, I'm sure. You know exactly what kind of movie this is going to be. And if that kind of movie is your bag, then you will probably enjoy this. I wouldn't recommend paying full price for it, but it's worth a matinee. And if this kind of movie is not your bag, well, this is not going to change your mind. But if you absolutely have to see a movie, well, then you should just go see Mad Max again, really. <laughs> and I say again because you already saw it once, right? Right? You better have. If not, you need to get on that. And yeah, there's really nothing more to say about San Andreas. It's an okay disaster movie. Not much more. So until next time, take care.